some so some people are just joining in anyway. So as I said, Keith, you've been on the show before anyway, on the show, you've been on the webinar before, so you know how it works. <laughs> Uh, I've had the experience. It, it works uh, very informally. <laughs> and so, you know, you're here to actually just share your your journey, your know-how, and uh, you're the nutritional expert in this case. And so as the, the Be Well talks about business, but also the, the well-being of ourselves, coaches and entrepreneurs, professionals, and so on, um, Looking after ourselves, self-care, eating, drinking, sleeping, and all that plays plays a big part in how we perform in life, but also in business. And so the, the aim of the Be Well is to bring people like yourself on, onto the webinar to actually have 20 minutes, a half an hour, where you actually share, tell us exactly what you're doing, where you are, how can this benefit us, what are the things that we're doing right, and what are the things we're doing wrong, uh, if we have any questions, you know, on from from the audience or the participants, they can just put their hands up and we can ask you questions. So we just keep it flowing. It's not just not a log, but a little, a little bit of a dialogue. Okay. Yeah, it's not a it's not a bad idea to be putting a little little bit of remarks on the in the chat about oh, can you cover that or I have a question yeah. about that, and then we can go back to everything and, and miss nothing. Okay, I've also got some questions myself. I've written down here. I prepared. I have prepared. And All so, that page. <laughs> so, if if there are any, you know, if there are any moments where you say, "Right, well, I've got some questions I'd like to ask." If not, you can just take it as it goes, and then we'll um, we'll jump in as, as we see something that you know doesn't. It's not clear. Is that good? So let me introduce anyway. This is Keith Robinson. Keith Robinson is a nutritional expert. Keith Robinson learned 15 years ago how to reverse heart disease and clean the cardio, cardiovascular system. Armed with this information, he has spent the last 15 years helping people to take control of their long-term health and wellness. The list of health challenges he has seen and helped people reverse is endless because once you give the body the nutrition it requires, along with repairing the cardiovascular system, the body will fix pretty much anything itself. Okay, so we're here today to talk about um, how to help the body fix itself. That's the topic today. So, Keith, you want to take it away? Hello, Keith, are you blocked? Oh, you blocked it there. He's blocked. Oh, Michelle, nice to see you. <laughs> Debbie, nice to see you. Anyway, which... <laughs> I, I suppose that would be a good idea. <laughs> Hello, still... everybody. Greetings from Ireland. Uh, nice to see everyone that is here. And no, I'm. Can you not, can you not hear me? No. We can. We can hear you. We can't. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? No? Oh, gosh. Give me a second. It'll, it'll come back. Oh. Is it back? Mm, we can, Are we back got... now? Yeah, we can hear you. We can there, hear... Was a, there was a little uh, there was a little glitch in the internet system. So uh, to everyone, am I coming and going? Okay. So uh, uh, hopefully I will be able to impart information to you that is helpful. Uh, feel free to throw uh, questions, queries, topics into the into the um, chat and I'll see them as I'm going along. Um, I've had an amazing journey over the last 15 years uh, because I learned things that were really, really helpful to me. And personally, I used to be worried about the area of cancer because both my parents had died of cancer before the age of 60. And uh, I was I spent some time involved in financial services. So I was setting up people's life cover, pensions, critical illness, all that area. And if somebody had an issue of health in both sides of their family, they were considered as high risk and therefore they had a loading on their policy. And that was the only information I was able to go by, you know, for myself. Then I realized you're only at the same risk. If you have the same diet, you're under the same stress and you have the same lifestyle and everything else is, 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 is the same, you will have the same problems. But you can completely override family history things mm -hmm. if you take better control of what you're doing and how you fuel your body. <clears throat> So we have to try and avoid uh, uh, as many of the poisons that are out there as we can. 
and we have to su supply our body with as much nutrition as possible to avoid what we are coming across or to counteract it. Um, from a health and wellness perspective, we do need good air, we need good water, we need exercise, and we need nutrition. Um, I'm not sure if, if many of you are familiar with this particular survey that was done by the Swiss government on the decrease of vitamins and minerals in fruits and vegetables from 1985 to 2002. It's just a 17-year period, but look at those droppages in different vitamins and minerals. Just looking even at broccoli, a 73% drop in calcium, a 62% drop in folic acid, and a 55% drop in magnesium. That's only three of the nutrients that are in the foods we're supposed to be eating. And if you're expecting to get vitamin six from a banana in that 17 year period, it dropped 95%. And this is why people are going to have to get B vitamin injections because there's no fuel left in our food. And this is a major problem. If, we, if we're expecting our body to perform, recover, replace itself, and it doesn't have the nutrition to work with, we are going to go down the slippery slope of depending of becoming dependent on the pharmaceutical industry. And we all know what's involved there. We're on loads of medications to hide the symptoms of what we have, but never deal with the problem. Otherwise, we should be only on medications temporarily. So we're going to cover a couple of things like the cardiovascular system for start off because it's a, it, it's a passion of mine. And when I came across this particular information first, I said, I'd like to be a bit of a guinea pig here because somebody was after telling me, you know, that it's going to be possible to reverse cardiovascular disease shortly. And I said, well, okay, I'd like to look into that. I was, as I said earlier, worried about the cancer area, but I realized more people are dying about of cardiovascular issues than cancer. So if I can get a uh, get a heads up on that, I would be in a, in a better position. So I was 46 at the time. The age of my vascular system was showing up to be a 40-year-old. I started following a protocol of helping my body from a nutritional perspective to, to be able to do better than it was. 90 days later, my vascular age actually dropped down to 22. And then a couple of months later, I had it checked again, and my vascular age had actually come down to a teenager. So this was all the proof I needed to understand that it is possible to fuel your body to actually clean its own cardiovascular system. So let's show you what's going on inside as we age. This is, this is the uh, a typical arterial system. In our 20s, we are manufacturing a certain level of nitric oxide. As we age, that level of nitric oxide production is dropping. So in our 40s, we are only making 50% of the nitric oxide we made in our 20s. But in our 60s, we are only making 15% of the nitric oxide we made in our 20s. And when we're not making enough nitric oxide, we start to build up plaque in the arterial system. Now, what's the problem with building up plaque in the arterial system? There are, there are twofold at least. When you have plaque in the arterial system, you have a risk of that plaque rupturing at any time. And if that plaque ruptures, a clot can form and it can then travel in the arterial system. And if it sticks in the brain, that's called a stroke. If it sticks in the heart, it's called a heart attack. But that's only problem number one. Problem number two is you lose the flexibility of the arteries. So the heart pumps blood, the arteries are trying to flex but they've lost their flexibility because there's a buildup of plaque around there. And what happens is when they've lost their flexibility, the heart is pumping, they try and flex, but they, you develop little cracks and tears through the arterial system. And what happens then is the body starts sending a message to your liver to increase cholesterol production to go in and seal the cracks and tears. Now, I've done an awful lot of cardiovascular screening uh, in my time which, with a device called a B-Pro, which is a class two medical device. And we would be measuring me uh, many bits of information within the cardiovascular system. And I'll actually show you one in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But when we find people with excessive stiffness in their arteries, we always found there was a correlation to their, le their level of cholesterol production. So... 
when the body is asking the, the liver to increase cholesterol production, it is doing it for a purpose to protect it, to protect the arterial system from bleeding out. But if you have a raised cholesterol, generally what's been told to you is your cholesterol is a bit high, you're at risk of heart attack and stroke, we better put you on a medication. But the medication is telling the liver to reduce cholesterol production, but absolutely doing nothing about what the problem was, which is on the screen. A buildup of plaque in the arterial system. And the reason for that was not enough nitric oxide production. Now, an average person only makes one to three seconds of nitric oxide production. And one person in two has natural blockers to nitric oxide production. One of them is which is called ADMA, which is short for asymmetric dimethylarginine. And what happens with, if you have a high level of ADMA, which I believe is the hereditary part of cardiovascular disease, ADMA parks on the endothelium. Arginine comes in to park on the endothelium, which you've got in from food sources, and the parking spaces are gone. And that's how it inhibits nitric oxide production. And there's another inhibitor called myeloperoxidase, which is the fancy word for oxidized LDL cholesterol. And that inhibits nitric oxide production as well. But there was a study done in the University of Hamburg, where, uh, and it took, it was 25 years of a study, and 75 healthcare professionals took part in, in doing this study, and they were looking for the reason of cardiovascular disease. And they found that if you can get your arginine levels over your ADMA levels by 160 to 1, you override ADMA. So even if you're predisposed to, to being blocked from nitric oxide production, as long as you can get your arginine levels high enough, you actually override that inhibitor and you also override myeloperoxidase. And what happens is you start manufacturing plenty of nitric oxide. And when, you're man when you manufacture plenty of nitric oxide, you don't only stop plaque building up, you melt it. And you can clean the entire cardiovascular system by fueling the body to do so. Now, so what I'll do now, yes. Uh, so we have questions. So we just, uh, yes. Uh, so nitric oxide. How how yes. do we how is that produced? How how do we produce that? What do we do to produce that, Keith? You when you consume few foods like meat, shellfish, nuts, chicken, rice, tapioca, they all contain an amino acid argin called arginine. And the arginine then goes into the bloodstream. It attaches to the lining of the vein in, and the arteries. It parks there and you make nitric oxide synthase, which turns into nitric oxide gas. That is the process. And in 1998, there was a Nobel Prize for medicine that actually proved that nitric oxide was a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system. But people are not being told this type of information. I, I even sat down with a surgeon one day who had uh, two heart attacks before the age of 40. He was a type two diabetic. He'd been on medication for 17 years and he had an ulcer on his leg that wasn't healing. And I started to share this information with him. And he said to me, he said, what side of medicine are you in? I said, I have nothing to do with medicine. He said, he says, you are remarkably well informed, he says, for somebody who's not medical. He says, so I have a question for you. He says, how come you, as a non-medical person, is educating me, a surgeon, on my health? I said, that's easy. I said, you are handcuffed to the pharmaceutical industry. I said, I'm not. And he smiled at me and he said, now I get it. And he said, tell me what to do. And I guided him exactly what to do. And he got all his bloods checked before, because he was working in one of the hospitals, he got all his bloods checked before he started using what, what we would recommend to use. It's, it's called V3 system. And he rang me within a week and he said, wow. He said, I had no idea this was so powerful. I said, why? What's after happening? He says, my cholesterol has gone way up. And I said, so you know what's happening? He said, yes. He says, I'm already melting the plaque in the arteries. Because if you're melting plaque in the arteries, the only place uh, it can go is back uh, into the how, bloodstream. How, how does that manifest in in, uh, in the way we are? What what is what does it give to us? I mean, obviously from inside is melting the plaque and so on. But how do we? What 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 happens on the outside? Do we feel anything? Do we feel different? More more uh, energetic? More yes. uh, 
mm-hmm. better performance, better recovery, more energetic, better sleep. If you have a cardiovascular system that is now clean, you are carrying better oxygenated blood supply to every part of the body. That means the brain will work better. That means uh, every, the liver will work better. We've even seen people who were on dialysis because their kidney function was not adequate and their creatinine level was way up. We've seen them work their way off dialysis because what is the what are the kidneys? They're a ball of blood vessels in the carrying case. But if you clean, if you can clean the rest of the arterial system, you can clean those as well. Well, so every part of the body. There's something uh, I think um, Michael's written something in the chat. Can you have a look at that? There's a there's a question. A shungite replacement uh, re- uh, and as water and uh, which less elements mm. do aid in the purity gland to give instruction to the thyroid and. Will the COO of the body to whip the cells to replenish themselves with a fairly good circulation or RDN cycle? To be honest, I have no experience of what you're talking about, but I I do know that the cardiovascular system will clean itself. Uh, I don't know of other methods. Like I, I use a method of fueling the body to increase nitric oxide production to about 36 hours of nitric oxide production instead of an average one to three seconds. Now, what I have seen from that is loads of knock-on benefit effects throughout the body, even even to nerve damage replacement. Because I, I have a friend who had MS to the point where he had no feeling in the left side of his body, no feeling in his right hand or right foot, lesions on his brain, and he followed this V3 protocol and over the space of a year, he actually eliminated every symptom of his MS. And subsequent brain scans shows he even removed the lesions from his brain. So I think there's massive amounts of knock-on benefits of cleaning the vascular system, plus giving the body the nutrition and filling that gap between what's in the food and what the body requires. And I think it just goes through everything and starts working on itself. The, the body is designed to replace itself, repair itself, but once it has the fuel, it will go through its priority list and start uh, start doing uh, what it's designed to do. Uh, what's the name of the protocol you mentioned? The V3 system, we use, we use an arginine complexor to uh, give the body the nutrition to repair the cardiovascular system. We use a live raw berry supplement to provide the body with massive amounts of antioxidants. Because as you know, antioxidants neutralize free radicals. And we also, uh, it's not only that, it's a natural anti-inflammatory, it's a natural pain suppressant, protects your cells from viruses. And then we use a live raw green supplement to improve what uh, all the things that greens do in the body. So greens are used to detox your organs, cleanse your blood, balance your pH, and uh, provide nutrition. And just in case anybody is not aware of it, I'll actually show you the correlation or the connection between plant chlorophyll and human hemoglobin. On the left, you have the molecular makeup of plant chlorophyll. On the right, you have the molecular makeup of human hemoglobin. And as you can see, they're exactly identical, except for the central ion in chlorophyll is magnesium. Central ion for human hemoglobin is iron. But interestingly enough, when you when chlorophyll goes into the body, the body somehow turns the magnesium ion into an iron ion. So the higher quality raw greens you put into your system, it's the next best thing to a blood transfusion. And we've even seen ladies who were having issues uh, during pregnancy where their iron levels were in trouble and other different issues or even preeclampsia. What happens is everything regulates and regularizes again. So their bloods come right and their preeclampsia goes away. um, And, there was a, an endocrinologist in the States, Dr. Joe Prendergast, who was one of the formulators of the arginine complexor we use. He told us that pregnant moms using the V3 system, their children develop at 123% of normal. But my guess is that's the way babies were always supposed to be. And the normal is uh, is below normal, if you know what I mean. So they're, they're, work, they're gauging against moms who have had poor nutrition 
uh, for so many years. And then you have a mom that now has excellent nutrition and the baby is going to be show that difference. Um, I'm going to uh, show you the cardiovascular screening of an 85 year old gentleman I was asked to help. I'm gonna just show you what, what the V3 system did for him. Um, this is a guy, uh, as I said, 85 years of age. When I met him first, the blue writing is when I met him first. The red writing is when I met him three months later. His BP at the time was 167 over 95. And that, as you know, is a high blood pressure. Average, they say, is 120 over 80. Uh, three months later, that man had improved to 131 over 77. He didn't change anything else bar give his body uh, fabulous nutrition. CASP stands for central aortic systolic pressure, which is the blood pressure in the heart at the left ventricle as the heart is pumping. So the device I was using actually measures the waveform pushing out from the heart to the left ventricle. It goes down and it bifurcates for the two legs. And that is where a waveform actually bounces back. So this device is measuring uh, pulse waveform but it's 99.7% as accurate as an invasive procedure to get the same information. So his central aortic pressure was working at a pressure of 162 when I met him first. And if you look at the average ages and the average pressures over on the left-hand side here, you would have to extrapolate those figures all the way down to an average 185-year-old person to be working at a pressure of 162. Within 90 days, he took that down to 122. He took 40 points off his arterial pressure, which is bringing him from an average 185-year-old to an average 85-year-old in three months. So that's a huge um, lot of pressure off the system. The RAI stands for radial augmentation index, and that's like the percentage stiffness of the arteries. Remember I said earlier, the heart pumps blood, the arteries are supposed to be flexible. So he'd lost a lot of his flexibility because he was coming in at 107% stiffness. 90 days later, he had improved that to 80% stiffness. And if you look at uh, even an average 60 to 70 year old works around 81.9. So he was better than that in arterial stiffness. Uh, so he was actually lowering the age of his vascular system uh, day by day. Um, the last figure is called radial augmentated pressure. That is like the gap between the waveform pushing out from the heart and the rebound wave bouncing back. So when the heart pumps blood, it goes, waveform goes out. When it hits bifurcation point, it bounces back. But ideally, you should have great blood flow going down the legs. But if you don't have much blood flow going down the legs, it's going to bounce back faster. So his rebound wave was actually bouncing back at a faster pace than it was being pushed out from the heart. And we know that because it's a plus four. So in the blue waveform, where I'm pointing with the cursor, that was actually the way the heart pumping out blood and it goes left to right and then bounces back. His rebound wave was bouncing back so fast that actually point uh, bounced on the left-hand side uh, because it's showing a plus four. That means very, very little circulation going down the legs. 90 days later, he improved that to a minus 10, which means much better blood flow getting down the legs. The only way that can happen is by cleaning the cardiovascular system. Any, any questions on that? You can one mic and, and, and ask a question if you wish. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot of detail you've given us there. Now, exactly, our minds are just going to work. <laughs> Well, where do we start? What kind of questions? Um, yeah, uh, we're trying to understand a little bit about, yeah, how do we clean? I mean, we, we talk about antioxidants and we talk about uh, quality greens. Yes. Uh, is it that simple? Yeah, it, you see, the body, the body is that simple. We are designed to perform, recover, and replace ourselves at a cellular level. We're, we're like a photocopier. So we are re recreating ourselves all the time. And I presume all of you here have actually used a photocopier at some point. And in offices, you probably have a photocopier in the corner that uh, you'd have maybe some Tipex stuck in the glass, you'd have dust in the mirror. And when you go to copy a page, you'll see the blemish coming out on that. So we are that photocopier. So if we don't give our bodies massive nutrition and especially antioxidants to neutralize the free radicals, which cleans our photocopier, we are going to replace ourselves at a much, much lesser quality than what we could. So as soon as we give our body that fuel, it's cleaning the photocopier, we get better 
we better uh, re replace and guess them. Um, awesome, Keith. Thank you so much. This information is really, really fascinating. And you keep talking about three months. For you, it was 90 days. For this 85-year-old person, it was 90 days. What What is this 90-day thing? Um, well, we would normally, if, we were, if I was doing a cardiovascular screening, I would allow three months for letting the body go through its changes. Mm -hmm. Now, in certain, in some cases, we have things happening even much faster uh, because some, I, I was asked to help, uh, actually a, a surgeon rang me one day from one of the private hospitals and asked me to help his brother get off medications. So it only, this guy was on, was hypertensive and he was on two medications. So I was working with him on what to do and how, what to take and how, and that. And he took his own BP, sent the figures to his brother every day. And then his brother then would guide him when to lower that, when to lower that one. You know, that only took six weeks for him to get off all his medications and his BP perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's just that sometimes some people are a little bit slower than others to react. And some people, uh, some people are want to be are very cagey and they're only going to go really slowly and they only want to use a little bit and, and, and let the body adjust all the time. Other people want to throw the kitchen sink at it and, and want to get there faster. Mm -hmm. So I would always say to everybody, allow three months to evaluate what's happening. And I always say to people, write down your current condition. Have your pains and aches? Where are they? What's what's the level of pain and ache? Have you been diagnosed with a particular condition? Are you on medications? And go and look at that list every week because sometimes the gradual improvement within the body is not quite noticeable and then you only really notice it if you're looking back at the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just, I don't wanna take up too much of your time, but my husband had a heart attack two years ago and he had stents put in and all kinds of stuff. And, I'm, and this is quite, you know, quite valuable information for me to help him. And, but he's, he's not big on, I don't know, he's, he's not, how can I say this? Not without... open-minded. <laughs> no, 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 no. He oh, is definitely, no, no, he is open-minded. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, um, he's, uh, he just believes in conventional medicine. So he has medicine. So he takes his medicine, yeah. you know, he's good at taking his medicine. And, and if I were to work, you know, if I were to ask him to, you know, do I, do I ask him to stay on his medication while we're, while I was, while, while I would be helping him through something like this or, or. It, it's an excellent question. And here's something that'll give you a, a good understanding. If, if let's say somebody's liver is not getting adequate blood supply, your liver is going to ask the heart to rise in pressure to get more pressure behind the system to get more enough blood to the liver. Mm -hmm. And the body will keep asking the heart to rise in pressure until the organs have sufficient blood supply. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is you'll end up hypertensive, but then a he the healthcare inter uh, uh, professional will, will, will intervene and say, your blood pressure is a bit high. We better put you on a medication. But think about what the medication does. The medication tells the heart to lower down on pressure, but does nothing about the original blood flow problem. So all you're doing is hiding a symptom that will get worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. So once somebody understands that, they, start, they should start to realize, maybe I should be looking a little bit different. Now, as you repair the vascular system, your body's going to stop asking your heart to rise in pressure. But if you're still on medications, what happens is the heart can now be working below normal pressure. So you have to do a seesaw. You have to improve the health and lower the medication, improve the health and lower the medication. And that's where uh, that, that's where it's important to have the involvement of somebody that can alter that. Now, I often come across people who say, well, I have my own blood pressure monitor. I'm going to I'm going to keep an eye on it. If it starts going too low, I'm going to have down the medication. They do it themselves, but that's their own choice. Mm -hmm. But it's it's important to understand what's going on and why it's going on. If somebody has is on cholesterol medication, the chances are the arterial stiffness is too high and the body's asking the heart to make more cholesterol to go in and seal the cracks and tears. Because cholesterol is actually really, really important in the body. It's used to make hormones, bile acids, uh, it's used to build cells. 87% of every cell in your body is built from cholesterol. So, uh, and it's used to protect your wiring in your brain. So it's it's highly important to have cholesterol, uh, but 
it's best to let the body decide what it needs uh, and, and work from there. But if you clean the cardiovascular system and you provide the body with the nutrition it requires, it's going to balance everything out. You know, thyroid function, everything. We've seen people get off altroxin. Yeah, but I, but you would you would need to have let's say a doctor monitoring it so that you would wouldn't you that's my that's my question you can't yeah, just what, you can't you, just start can, eating greens all day long and then and then stop taking your medicine is no uh, what you what you can do is you can present to your GP and say look it looks like my blood pressure is a bit low I think you have me on too much too much medication ah okay <laughs> ah okay got it all right cool very so, good. And sometimes you can say to the doctor, look, and I'm going, I'm going to start eating healthier. I'm going to start doing exercise. I'm going to start doing things better for me. He says, will you monitor my things so that if anything changes, you can lower my medication and put them on notice. Michael. Michael, hey, you got a question? Keith, Keith you, you rock, man. I, I like you. You're very good at what you do. I like I, the fact, I, I like the fact that you haven't subscribed to Pfizer and wearing a Pfizer thing but oh, well, there's one I, aspect that you haven't brought up yet is the honeymoon period because too much nitric oxide the citric soda on the shelves are going to be sold out the ladies are going to be well happy and i can assure you all the husbands aren't going to be going to the doctor they're going to carry on with your concept uh, you're, you're you're talking about the viagra effect <clears throat> that's correct <laughs> yeah the the oldest gentleman we saw sorting out uh, erectile dysfunction was 92. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I, I, I'm wholeheartedly going to um, implement your, your concepts into my, my programs. And I've enjoyed this this one. Thanks, sure. Gary, for setting it up. So, Keith, you so, so, so I've got a question here, Keith. So we're, yeah. what, we're, what we're saying is here, we should be listening to our bodies more yes. than actually... Uh, jumping straight away to doctors or, or or trusting giving our trust in doctors in medicine conventional me medicine is that what we're saying well you see you have to look at you have to follow the money uh the the, the medical profession is trained by the pharmaceutical industry the pharmaceutical industry's end goal is to have as many people as possible on as many medications as possible for as long as possible. They have no care on whether you feel well, look well, are well, as long as you are making plenty of money for them. Uh, and, and that's where the problem, and, and you, you have to look at the, you have to look at the whole COVID thing uh, to see how trustworthy is the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry. They're very quick to tell you, you should do this and should do that and should take part in a medical experiment. And how many people are in trouble now from taking part in that medical experiment? Huge amounts. I'm coming so, across okay. every day. <laughs> Let me ask you some of the questions I've got here that we can move away from that. Unless Debbie, you got a question about something? No? Okay. Uh, question here. Striking a balance. Okay, the question was, how can we find a balance between supporting the body's innate healing mechanisms and external interventions? Basically, what Je De Debbie was saying before in our modern healthcare practices, how can we find the balance? The, the, you you find your own balance by providing your body with the fuel for it to get its own balance. And, and, and I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example of a case we were involved in where there was a lady having migraine so bad, she would lose the sight in one eye for two days. And we were running answer to to my to my um, and she came back the following month and she said my migraines are practically gone she came back the following month she says guess what she says i had a leaky bladder that's now sorted itself out and she came back the following month and every month she was adding something else to the list of what she had seen rectify for itself and then several months later she said guess what she says i never told you but she says we had been 13 years trying to get pregnant she says we're now pregnant wow so the body the body had the fuel to work with and it worked through its priority list and it has it knows what to do. We don't have to tell it what to do. We just provide it with the fuel and it will do what it needs to do. 
So when we, when we talk about fuel, we're talking about the personal, the, the Nutrition. personalized, personalized stuff that we need, like whether it's food, sleep, um, and yes. meditation yeah. and drink. All, all yeah. the things that ben, that the body benefits from. But re remember, there's a massive shortfall between what we're eating and what we need. The nutrition and the food is not there. And the and the, 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 the food industry is interfering with the quality of the food. And there's all sorts of things being added to our food supply that are not good for us. Yeah, yeah. I think what you were just saying about the banana is a, is a typical uh, yeah. example, a taste of a banana as well that comes from, I don't know, Ecuador, and it takes three months to get to to Europe, and by the time you get it, it's like, you know, it, it maybe it's shelf life is like two or three days before it uh, it just um, yes. goes, goes off. And so yes, it, it, it's not, uh, what about homegrown? Yes, it's always good to do a certain amount of homegrown, whatever you can, as long as you're getting the seeds that are uh the non-gmos uh the supplementation that i use is is actually tested down to parts per trillion to make sure there's no traces of herbicides insecticides gmos or heavy metals and parts per trillion means down to one drop of water in 20 olympic size swimming pools so in other words this is the purest of the purest of food you are supplying your body with and the body just knows exactly what to do with it so we talk. Uh, as Debbie just mentioned here supplements. Is this what we yes. can how we can help our, help the body through taking you supplements? You see, if, if you rem if you remember the, the the lack in the in in the the value of the nutrition that we're eating, uh, there we have um, we have a severe lack that way. What is the uh, if you ate a plate of salad fifty years ago, you'd have to sit down and eat forty seven plates of salad today to get the same nutrition. So who's going to do that? The only way you will fill that gap is with quality supplementation because uh, the raw berries that we use uh, is tested the way, the way that I was saying it. But for every 30 mils of that, from an antioxidant perspective, you'd have to eat three and a half kilos of raw fruit. And at 30 mils twice a day, it's proven to reduce free radical damage by 43% in three weeks, which is pretty much slowing down the aging process by 43% at the same time. And, and I'll tell you how powerful this is. I was asked to meet a guy with hepatitis C, which, as you know, is a virus that attacks the liver. And I got him to drink a lot of that uh, for the first um, few days, also using the arginine complexer and the raw greens. But I wanted to go really high on the raw berries. and his liver was at the point where it was enlarged and hard from this virus and he was losing that battle but he went back two weeks later for an ultrasound on his liver and they told him his liver looked normal again so he he actually beat that in two weeks now it was another four weeks before he had a blood test but that blood test gave him all clear uh, we also had a case in dublin of a lady who was hiv positive very weak very bloated and uh, <clears throat> she had a certain viral count from her blood tests she went on the V3 system and then with a, a week a, a week uh, after, a week before going back for blood tests, she actually had a, did a microbiome gut reset, which we also do. And her viral count in her body had halved at that stage. She continued with microbiome friendly foods and using the V3 system. And three months later, uh, her viral count, I saw the paperwork myself, it said for us, the viral count underneath said undetectable. So she eliminated HIV from our body in six months. So when we talk about raw berries, Keith, what, what are we talking about? What kind, what, um, what? Acai berry, bilberry, blueberry, goji berry, pomegranate, elderberry, cranberry, grape seed extract, and green tea. Okay. So all of that is all together to create these supplements. It's a, it's a smoothie. Yeah. It's a smoothie of the highest quality. Uh, it's also antiviral, antifungal, natural anti-inflammatory, natural pain suppressant. But that's what those fruits and berries do anyway, you know, so it's, it's just in a natural form. But it's the testing that makes the difference here, because if you're testing down to a drop of water in 20 Olympic size swimming pools, you know, you have serious quality and you know the body's going to use it. I think we could be, would be interested in knowing where you can get these berries. 
Yeah, uh, can, uh, connect with me on, on, on LinkedIn. I, I will guide anybody that they wish uh, to, to access what I do, but I'll not only do that, I will do a one-to-one -one with anyone that wishes. I don't charge people to share information, answer questions, or hold their hands through the journey. That's my contribution uh, to mankind. And uh, I will guide them on that journey. I mean, you name a condition, we have probably helped somebody uh, sort it out. Uh, and there's, there's no, there is no limits. Yeah. Uh, do people, does someone have to have a condition to actually go uh, to go through this V V three system, or can a person not have any? Well, you see, there, uh, I can't imagine there's too many people on the planet that have nothing wrong with them, or are not a short distance away from something wrong. You know, so if you if you supply your body with the fuel that it needs, it's going to be working on whatever's even. Um, down the road, you know, you'd avoid what's coming. And we, we know that through blood tests, right? You you can do that through blood tests if you wish, or you can just decide I'm going to fuel my body better now from now on and, and never look back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, I, I, a, a, small, a small amount of nutrition keeps somebody right. If you have a problem, you just throw more fuel at it until, until you get there and then a small amount will avoid you ever going backwards. Yeah, no, I, I was just as, as we're talking about business and you know the be well. I remember um, where food and nutrition was not the important. Th the most important thing was actually just running nonstop and throwing food inside of your body uh, while driving or whatever you found at whatever time during the day. So were, you'd have I'd have lunch at like three o'clock in the afternoon, have dinner at like nine thirty, ten in the evening, and so again for entrepreneurs or people who are you know busy people. They don't really take much care of that. So you know, I think what you're saying, Keith, is very important for us today to, yeah, what we put inside of us, but also maybe the timing as well is important. When we eat or not. Yeah, I, I don't know much about that side of it. Uh, and, and different people have different schedules and I have to work around what they're doing. But uh, I suppose if you feel hungry, you should probably eat something. <laughs> and don't eat until you say, oh, God, I'm full. <laughs> You know, be be logical, common sense. In fact, I, I, I often wonder where common sense went to because uh, it's not that common these days. Michael, you with your hand up. Yeah, common sense leads me to not drinking beer and making sangria with berries now, but only one glass. Make sure that it's full of lo loaded with nutrients. <laughs> yeah. you're So you're looking for a good excuse. To use them, yeah, yeah, so a good yeah. excuse now. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, along those lines, isn't red wine grapes? <laughs> That's a berry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, red, we'll red see wine. the ladies. So they they like okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People people will find the positive forever. <laughs> they want to find it. I've, I've got a quite everything a, a, in moderation, in little no, bit in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keith, yes. Keith, so. You get to a stage, the block melts, cholesterol boosts up and it gets absorbed by your, your kidneys and, and liver. But what happens if someone's got an issue with their vagus nervous system? Well, does, does remember, will, the, will the vagus nervous system and, and self rectify itself? Uh, and, and from, what I have, from, what, from what I have seen, the, the body just works on everything. And nit nitric oxide has several benefits in the body. It's not only used in, in, in the body as, uh, as a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system. It can be used as a hormone, a neurotransmitter, and, inter and an intercellular messenger. So there's lots of benefits. And, and that's another reason why other things um, correct themselves. And also, if there's, if there's any nerve damage anywhere, for every nerve that's damaged, there's 20 nerves to take their place. Nitric oxide helps to collect, connect them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's an all rounder for for the body just going into repair mode, whatever's wrong. That's quite interesting because I deal with people with um, that have issues with their prefrontal cortex and their hippocampus caused from long term trauma through trauma bonds, and these dopamine ups and downs very quickly. Also the oxytocin, and I'm certainly going to try integrate this in the sessions um to see if it'll help 
speed up the process where the brain can um, normalize quicker, but it also has to be done under EEGs and FECGs and all the other nonsense in between. But overall, a very interesting chat. This, I this may help you. you. This may help you. Hello. We've seen we we we've seen even we've seen dementia even sort itself out. There was there was one guy who was. Oh really? Yeah, he was he was he was no able he was no, he was no longer able to to communicate with his family anymore. He was sitting in the kitchen all day, could, didn't know them, nothing. And his daughter put her put him on the V3, and three months later he was back conversing with them, the same as nothing was ever wrong. Wow. And now you not, see blood flow, a, blood, blood flow and blood flow. oxygen and, yes. and nutrients. There was and there wow. was a child, there was a child up in Donegal who had um uh, he he was he needs he needed a special needs assistance. He was ADHD. Uh, and no, he was dyslexic. And the parents put the child on the V three, and he was getting uh, two to three spellings right out of thirty beforehand. And he had the special needs assistant. Three months later, he didn't need a special needs assistant and was getting twenty eight spellings right. So out the new the neurons just started popping and working yes. like they meant yeah. to. That's exactly. amazing. Absolutely amazing. That is amazing. I, I said, wow, because I think my mom suffers from dementia and Alzheimer. And so she's in that state back in the UK. So when he just mentioned that, I just thought okay, she's been like that for quite a few years now. Um, yeah. Looking at the, the healing uh, capacity of the body, what about the mind and the body? Where can the mind come into this? with uh, mindfulness and meditation and yoga and all that. Does that play a part as well in the healing process? I, I don't know the answer to that, but they're all good things if people can focus on them. Uh, and not everybody is a sit down and meditate person or sit down. And, uh, do you know what I mean? Some people always have to be doing something. I, have, I can't sit down and do nothing. I just, I always have to be doing something. So if it suits the person, uh, yes, definitely be doing those things they're they're all helpful um and from there's another thing that crossed my mind from a hormone perspective you know the way lots of people are depressed and they have uh, and and they're on different medications for that your your serotonin which is your your happy hormone uh 90 of that is actually manufactured in your gut so if your gut microbiome is wrong your 200 different hormones are manufactured in your gut so ever your 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 factory is going to be wrong so that's that's something to keep in mind also but sometimes the gut microbiome is 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 out of kilter and not working correctly and when you reset the gut you're actually resetting many systems all the systems in your body so so what, what do you see for the future Keith regarding nutrition and so on do you see us actually going towards a future where we'll be taking supplements and we will not be eating food, as in food has such a low nu nutritional value. Do you see that happening in the future? I think there. I think there will be a change in the world that we're in at the minute, uh, because there has been a lot of interference in in the food industry. And there's been, you probably see, saw for many, many years, chemtrails in the skies, which is designed to interfere with everything also. But I think the powers that controlled all that are being taken out at the minute. And as that happens, we will be moving into a different world than what we are at the minute. I believe the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry are on the way out. They have shot themselves in the foot over the last couple of years. And we will have things like med beds coming in to play, which are, are, are there for a long time, but hidden for a long time. And I think there's going to be a massive change as we move forward. But I don't know the time span. And we still need to be in, in, in as best control of our health and wellness as we can to get to that point. Because some people won't get that far because they're already in trouble and they're not and, and the need to need help. And as we discussed before, medications hide symptoms. They don't fix the problems. No, just, just thinking about with AI coming along now, giving everyone the chance to actually personalizing your own healing journey and so on. I wonder where that's going in, in that, whether we're going that direction as well. Each one is his or her, her own doctor. You know, where you're able to actually just know exactly what's happening inside your body all the time. Yeah, you see, we 
we we're only using a small percentage of our brain function. And I think that's also designed and uh, our pineal gland is calcified because they're putting fluoride in the water. So there's there's loads of things that are stopping us from being at our full potential. And all, a lot of that should be changing in the near future. Yeah. Oh, man, we've got a, we've got a question there in the chat. I think Michael's put something in the chat. Wait a minute. Can, Keith, have you had results in skin elasticity? Elasticity. Uh, Yes, uh, but sometimes that involves um, collagen as well. Uh, in fact, I, I, I'll show you a result here of collagen. Um, Where is that skin? Is that taking like those? Uh... Hmm. That's that's ninety. That's uh, sorry. That's one week of what we call collagen loading, which is loading the system with collagen because most people have a have a. Um, a lack of collagen in the system, so uh, no no injections required. <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds. I think we. I, I would like to know more about this uh, V three system, and I'd like to know more about the berries as well. Because I I consider myself to be quite healthy. I'm fit. I'm quite fit physically. I play yeah. tennis. Go walking. I look up. Look at you know. Care about what I eat. How much what I drink, or you know, how many hours I sleep, and so on. So I, I do have a lot of attention around that, but I'd like to know more about this V3 system. Yeah, well, the, the V3 system does include the raw greens, the raw berries, and the arginine complexer to make the nitric oxide. So, uh, as I often say to people, some people said to me, were saying, oh, "Oh, well, I just need my vascular system sorted out. I'm not worried about the other two. Yeah, and and I said, yeah, what's going to ha how is the body going to rebuild itself and repair itself? Uh, and if you're if you're going to um, increase oxygenated blood supply around the arterial system, you're going to stir up trace the toxins and medications that have been there for years. So you can toxify yourself slowly while all that stuff has been cleaned. So you need excellent antioxidants and excellent greens and everything to mop up those toxins and make the journey easier. So what about you will, guys? Will celery, will celery help, will celery help Pardon? with the mop up? Celery? Yeah. Uh, I, I honestly, I'm sure it would be helpful, but uh, so, the greens the greens um, that we are using are um, mulberry, alfalfa, barley grass, and peppermint oil. That, that'd be what would be in the raw greens that we're using. You said celery, Keith? Yeah. I absolutely yeah, agree with you, Keith, because if you take the Neanderthal men, they look so ugly, but the women look so nice on the caveman paintings. It's because they were eating the berries. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm convinced now. Uh, yeah. I must go and take a look at those pictures. <laughs> well, just go to any cave. <laughs> yes. Sometimes people think I'm living in a cave. <laughs> well, we all live in our own cave. Okay. I miss what's going on in some of the places. As the only remaining woman here in this group, <laughs> um, you mentioned earlier something about vitamin B, right? Um, yeah. For example, I'm a vegetarian and I have been yes. all my life. I have been all my life. My family wasn't vegetarian. I just couldn't, I just couldn't eat it. It just, yes. so I've never had meat. I, until I was like 18 years old, I would try it once a year and make a big deal out of it. And then I would go puke and that would be it. And I was done, right? Yeah. So um, no, no meat for me. Um, so I take, I take a vitamin B12 supplement. I take yes. that. And, but you know, I'm not, it's, it's, um, the question that I actually have here is, is how important is this, you know, all of these various vitamins, A, B, C, D, E, whatever they're all called, K and 12s and whatever numbers they have. Right. So how important are these supplements, um, on a general thing? Because, one of the okay, I'll, I'll I'll tell you where I'm coming from. One of the one of the um, mindsets or the, the the approaches that people have around here. I'm in Germany, is mm -hmm. that if you eat good foods, you don't have to take vitamins. Just eat the right things. And I'm actually kind of you know laughed at a little bit because I take B12. But then it's yes. like okay, well you don't eat meat, so you're okay, you know. But um, the question is, what what you know i don't know i guess it's just what vitamins should we be taking or or should we be taking any extra vitamins because you talk a lot about supplements and the antioxidants that's like vitamin e is an antioxidant 
-hmm. from my understanding. So um, what, which of those, um, where should we be putting our focus? Well, you see, I, I don't focus much on a lot of other supplementation. I know not all supplements are created equal. And some, okay. some of them the, that they say about, oh, there's vitamin D, and it turns out to be in synthetic and it's no use to the body. The body doesn't, doesn't absorb it. So whatever you're using, it needs to be recognized by the body as food and absorbed mm -hmm. that. And this is why I, I plump more for the raw greens and the raw berries that are already prepared and mm -hmm. tested and making sure that that quality is there. Mm -hmm. And then the body will use what it needs. It will discard what it doesn't need. And there would be, it, there would be um, uh, suitable for vegetarians. Um, the only thing some people have a small bit of worry about in the arginine complexity, there is vitamin D, but it is extracted from sheep's wool. And some people have an issue that, oh, well, that's not, that's not vegetarian then, <laughs> you know, yeah. but the sheep have to discard their wool every year anyway so mm -hmm. but, and it's not it's just from the wool okay so as, as we're coming to the end here keith we, right um is there a, is there a website is there somewhere where we can go and see we can get some literature on this yeah i i'll send you the i'll send you the link to that afterwards um okay. most of most of the time i i, I prefer to go through on a one-to-one -one basis the information because the website is really only to access what, what the stuff that they might want to access. From an information perspective, it's a bit lacking. But so I do the information part, but I can send them to a particular site to access what I'm using myself. Okay, I think that would be very helpful. Um, are there any other questions here? I think Michael's just put something on the chat before we before we close up. This mm -hmm. little box you put in there. Is there, is there between difference? frozen and not frozen to juice? Um, <clears throat> I don't know the answer to that. What I use is not frozen. It, it's fresh and, and, and it's, it's live food. I have no clue what impact freezing food has on the nutritional value. Okay. Debbie, can... Debbie's Googling the answer. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we're talking, we're Googling. We're trying to understand, you know, we, we're, we want to be to at the top of our game. So I think whatever comes along, we want to, you know, we want to perform, perform better than everyone. So listen, Keith, thank you very much for, the, for your time, for so much information. I'm sure we're really curious. I am. I want to go and find out a little bit more about all this, and maybe I'll even set up a call with Keith to understand how, um, how we can actually implement some of this. Yeah, I, I'm happy to do Zoom calls with anyone. Uh, <laughs> to, to Because some people... Uh, will only get into the nitty gritty of what they want to talk about on a one-to-one -one basis. They won't be doing, they won't be doing it in, in groups. That's why I always like to do people on a one-to-one -one basis uh, because it can, it can be far more into far more depth, you know, and, and <clears throat> people will talk about things uh, that they really actually want to talk about and don't want to talk about when there's anyone else around. Can, can I, I have just one last question and it, it's how can I reach you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, on the, on the LinkedIn there. You connect with me in LinkedIn. Yeah. It's very easy to, to okay. work, work from there. Do we yeah. have that? Do we no. have that link? Yeah, Keith Robinson. I can put it. I can put it's it. On, if you if uh, on the on the LinkedIn for this page, I did the first comment ah. beneath it. So it's easy. Okay. It's All easy right. to connect Perfect. there and, uh, and and work from there. And I, okay. I'm, uh, I'm always on. I'm always keeping an eye on what's coming or going. Brilliant. So listen, I uh, thank you very much for coming along. This is the kind of people that we want to bring onto the Be Well anyway. So people are bringing a different perspective on business and life and so on. So thank you, Keith. Next week, we've got um, uh, a coach called Kay Locke. Kay Locke. And she's going to be talking about decision making from the heart. Talking about intuition, basically. So decision making from the heart. So it makes sense. Yeah, if you're hot, if you're free, you want to come along. It's from five to six. Sorry about the, the timing. I made a mistake today with the timing, but uh, we're here. We've got to record. This is going to go on the YouTube channel, Keith. So if you want to use this with other people, you can get them to watch the video and so on. Um, so we're finished. Thank you very much for being here and have a great day. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.